Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington and I'm here with Michelle Miller, Director of People Ops at a boutique marketing localization agency. This unbelievable woman manages a network of over 4,000 freelance translators in more than 75 countries who help businesses translate their marketing messages to reach audiences around the globe. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm so excited. So first off, I think people are going to want to know more about what marketing localization is. Right. So why don't we start there? Okay. Well, I get this question a lot, especially at networking events, when I say, oh, I'm in marketing localization. They're like, what is that? <laughs> uh, it's pretty much, it's, uh, we take clients' messages, if they want to translate it, um, if they want to go into launch a website in Japan, or they want to do a brochure in Brazil, um, we can take care of the translation, we can help with digital marketing in-country, um, we can help with copywriting, we can design banner, banner ads from scratch. Um, so really it's just giving that local um, cultural nuances mm -hmm. from on the ground um, experts, okay. and then they provide that for the clients. Nice. Yeah, it's fun. So it makes, you know, it's able to take a business's message and make it, you know, something that everybody can take in wherever they're at in the way that they like to take in their messages. Yes. So it's the difference between just straight translation is, you know, you can have English copy and then say like simplified Chinese. It can have a direct translation, but it may not work for the market. Yeah. So localization means that you're really tuning into the local market landscape. So, you know, the nuances of the culture, what colors work well for that culture, what concepts work well. So some things that work in the U.S. as a concept wouldn't work overseas in a different country. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on what their marketing materials are. And so we make sure that that works for the local market. So you said you work with about four, you're, you're responsible for about 4,000 translators. Yes. What do you do for those translators? How do you manage all of those people? Yeah, it's a lot of people. And it's not just translators, actually. It's um, copywriters, graphic designers, okay. anyone who's in country. Um, but I personally, I, so I head up the network. So we have, um, we do recruitment of anyone that we need for other languages. If we say we need a new copywriter for Canadian French, I go and find that copywriter. Okay. Um, I walk them through the recruitment process, we test them. Um, I also run our onboarding to make sure that they, you know, are, they understand our company, but also understand our clients too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then throughout the process, just when a project comes up, I help to make sure that we match the right person with the right content. So they're subject matter experts and we look and make sure that, oh, this person is really good at technical content. Maybe they're not good at creative or promotional content. Uh -huh. So it's really matching their skill set with the right project. So we do that, and then I also take care of you know payment and anything to do with monitoring their quality to make sure that the language is working with that. So I kind of, you know, I'm a jack of all trades in that area, and yeah. I um, just kind of manage the end-to-end -end relationship with them. Okay. So what does it take for somebody to get into a, a career field like yours? Well, I mean, it happened by accident for me, kind of. Uh, I had actually came from teaching and I was doing that for three years and then I was kind of burnt out on it and I would moved to Denver and I was just looking for something um, different, completely different. My background, I have a degree in English, so the language is a draw for me. I've yeah. always been interested in it. Um, I found a Craigslist posting and it was for a just a QA engineer where I was QAing educational materials that were being adapted from US English into UK English. And so I was just helping to make sure that all the spellings were the right way, the colors spelled right, and um, that mentions you know, all the cultural things would work for a British market. And then uh, from there, it just kind of spiraled into a resource manager position opened. And um, they, I you know, really made an effort to make sure that I showed that I was interested in the company and that yeah. I wanted to be there. And so they said, hey, do you want, this is completely different, but do you, are you interested? And I said, sure, I'll learn how to do it. Um, I had about two days of training because the person I was replacing was moving to Australia. Uh, and I just kind of got shoved into it, but I learned on the job as I was doing it and asked a lot of questions. 
and you know worked with people on my team and um, just kind of went from there and I've kind of taken on different roles ever since then so really it's just about jumping at the opportunity when it arises and not being afraid to go into something that you're not used to or it's a new industry. I love that you said that. So I know, you know, we're called Women of Denver. So we're going to talk a little bit about this, this, I know that women often have, and this is a considered a women's issues kind of thing, but um, women often have a tendency to not go for things that they don't have experience with. And you just said that you jumped in to something that you didn't necessarily know, but you were willing to try it. Mm -hmm. What gave you the bravery to do that? Uh, you know, I asked myself that a lot. Like I just kind of, I was interested in it. I've always loved learning new things. Um, actually, when I got into teaching, it kind of happened last minute as well. I was at the school and I was teaching and I got a phone call on a Saturday before school started saying, hey, the current kindergarten teacher just got a new position and she quit. Mm -hmm. We have an opening. You've been a paraprofessional here for years. Are you up for the challenge? And I said, yes, just give it to me. It. So it's wow. kind of in my <laughs> DNA, I guess, a little bit. It's just to kind of jump at it. And I, I mean, I'm terrified doing this, like setting yeah. up a classroom last minute and then jumping into this new role with very little training. Yeah. It's really scary. And I've made a lot of mistakes and I've fallen flat on my face. But <laughs> I have just kept doing it because I realized that doing that has led to other opportunities that yeah. I'm really excited that I've had. So have you ever fought that imposter syndrome that comes when you're trying something new that you're not experienced with? Oh yes, I have, um, I'm very much acquainted with imposter <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> um, it's, you know, the whole fake it till you make it type yeah. thing. Uh, which I don't really like because I don't like fake people. I don't like putting on an act, but when you're in a new situation where you haven't done something before, sometimes you just have to go for it. And doesn't mean that you, you know, you, you go away from who you are, really your authentic self, but mm -hmm. you're using your strengths in a new situation and you're being challenged in a way that you haven't known before. So you just kind of go for it. And the imposter syndrome, you know, it I was real. always praying that no one would realize <laughs> that I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> until I got into it more. It's funny, it's true. It's very true that if you act the part and you look the part, people will believe you. Mm -hmm. And no one can really see that that thing where we it's kind of like a spotlight like everyone knows Everyone knows and it's just following you around, but they don't they don't they, they don't have know no clue. I love that about your story Yeah <laughs> I was just talking to someone today that um, She was saying that she was having an issue with um, just like workload and life stress and everything Coming all at once on her and she's like, I just feel so emotional. I was like, I am the most emotional sensitive person in the world I was like, but you have to have ways to deal with that yeah. So I'm like I try not to let that show as much at work I mean, there's a time and a place sometimes you just blow up and you yeah. show it. I mean you can't help it but you know, you can learn tricks to calm yourself down and to like, you know come to your, into yourself and realize, you know, I can handle this situation instead yeah. of just letting a freak out happen. Yeah, I know all about freak outs, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you have any career mentors that have helped you? I mean, you have a lot of philosophies and, um, you know, you have some powerful lessons that you've learned. Was there anybody that helped support you in that journey or did you just kind of figure it all out on your, by yourself? Oh, definitely not by myself. Yeah, um, I've had several very good mentors. Not, um, you know, mentor as like my official mentor, but um, who've helped me along the way. When I was teaching, I had some other fellow teachers who were older, more experienced. Mm -hmm. um, Janice, Anna, Phyllis are the top three that come to mind for them, and they just were amazing. And they, you know, helped you walk through failures and propped you up. Um, my current role, um, I'd say my boss is a very big mentor for me, Lindsay. Um, she's just very supportive. She's very passionate. Um, she fights for what she believes in, and mm -hmm. she puts her people first, which is very inspiring to me. Yeah, I love that. So how do you get these people? Um, I, think the, I think the term mentor has a big, big is, it's a big word for people. And people think a mentor means you have this official relationship and you say, hey, mentor, and you have these official meetings that are mentorship meetings, you know, but I don't think it really works that way. It hasn't for me at any point. Um, and I've had a lot of people that I consider mentors. How did you engage those people and create those relationships for yourself? Um, yeah, well, 
it was easy in my current role. She's my boss, so yeah. we have we we have you know catch ups with each other with each other a lot, and it just has kind of evolved into a more you know she coaches me along and leadership that I'm trying to develop and um, you know listens to me. She's dropped everything to go listen to a two hour vent session wow. before. So I mean, that is a very organic situation. She's right there. Um, in the past, I've just kind of I tend to seek out the people who I. I tend to I go towards people who are older because I, I look for their wisdom that they have and I know that they have a lot that they can teach me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've just kind of sought out the people that you know I kind of see are similar to me in some ways, and then who I want to be if I've observed them and what they're doing that I want to exhibit those same traits. Yeah. So I've just kind of you know tried to develop a relationship with them and. You know, ask their ask questions and listen to what they have to say, and yeah. um, just really, I reflect a lot on what they've you know told me and how I can apply what they've done into my own life. And how do you maintain the relationship over time? Um, it's hard, and I haven't been the best at it actually, okay. with, especially with the people that I used to teach with. Um, I wish that I was better at keeping in touch with them. Um, in general, I you know I try to utilize LinkedIn and Facebook uh, and all of that, the social yeah. media. Um, and then I've been really trying lately just to you know pick up the phone and say, do you want to have a coffee? We haven't caught up for a while. Yes. So I mean, it's it is hard to keep that up, and that's something that I struggle with. Um, but you know, it's part of learning. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I've had the mentors that I have. I would say that. I don't keep up with them all of the time. We're not in constant communication, but if an opportunity comes up that they think of that says my name all over it, they'll get in contact. Right. And then likewise, every now and then I might just reach out and say, hey, is there anything I can do for you? Just to always point out the fact that, hey, I'm ready to serve you. Do you need anything? So that they know that you know I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that we can have a trade. I just feel like it needs to be a, a give and take yeah, trade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I have. My sisters, I have three sisters as well, and they're a big influence in my life. Um, my oldest sister, especially um, when it comes to business, um, she's very, I picture her as very successful, and she's been through, she's managed a lot of people before, and um, so I go to her a lot for um, just general advice about how to handle certain situations or how she's dealt with, you know, having a family and a career yeah. and all of that. So it's just, you know, finding those people. Yeah. So what's one of your greatest pieces of career advice that you can share? I think it would just be the risk taking, um, not being afraid to go outside of your comfort zone. Um, it can really, you know, you can test yourself in ways that you never imagined that you would find yourself doing. Um, I recently did this last year. Uh, I was terrified of public speaking, but I decided that I really wanted to get out there yeah. more and push myself. So I found a conference that was local, um, relevant to my industry, it's the Colorado Translators Association, and um, they were getting proposals for their for speakers, and so mm -hmm. I just said, hey, I'll write a proposal, just see what happens, and I was accepted, and I prepared, 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 I practiced insane amount. Good for you. Um, I had a lot of fun because I was able to be creative with my presentation, and then I went, and I was so so nervous, but I was able to do it. It was only about you know 20 people, but for me that was a lot just to put myself out there. That's a fill uh, room. <laughs> it, it was, uh, and there was a one guy that kept just interrupting the presentation to ask <laughs> questions, and uh, you know you, you learn that you have to kind of go with the flow as that yeah. happens. But um, I mean, I was so impressed with myself that I was able to do that. But then off of that, it brought another opportunity. Wow. Um, someone who saw me there. She was hosting a panel at a conference in Berlin, and she said, hey, I would love to have you as a panelist. And so Golly. I broached it with my boss. I said, <laughs> hey, I think this is a really great opportunity to get out in our industry. Uh, and she supported me all the way. And so then I found myself a month later in Berlin on oh a panel. My so you never wow. know how it can just kind of spiral into new opportunities that you didn't think were possible. Yeah, take those chances. You mm -hmm. never know what, I mean, that is great opportunities after your first speaking engagement to go and get something that big. Yeah, it was a very proud moment for me. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, well, is there any last piece of information or advice or bit of wisdom that you'd love to share with everybody before we take off? Um, yeah, I would just say, 
you know, stay true to yourself as much as possible. I know everyone says, says that. They're always like, oh, be yourself. And it can be hard at times. Yeah. Um, I've been working a lot on myself recently, just kind of figuring out um, my own values and how to stay um, authentic to them when I'm, you know, in leadership or anything that I'm doing. Um, and just trying to, you know, stick to that as much as possible, even when it's hard. And even if you are the one person in the room who you feel like you're kind of on the outskirts because mm -hmm. maybe you're not the most outspoken person, um, just sticking to that and knowing that there are strengths in that. Yeah. And that, you know, you have a lot to bring to the table no matter what situation. You just spoke my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was that person. I had to realize, mm -hmm. you know, you can still, you know, you can make that work for you and it becomes yeah. a, um, a benefit, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom today, your tips on how to get a mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, loved it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and our guest, Michelle Miller. I can't wait to see you again soon, and I want you to always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you soon.